Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today we are talking corner balancing. When we make certain modifications to our suspension, it completely upsets the geometry, meaning our camber, caster, and toe can potentially be out. Not only does this dramatically affect the way the vehicle steers, but it can impact how it brakes, how it accelerates, and how it takes a corner. Now, if you're simply installing a lowering spring setup, this isn't really something you need to worry about because there is no change that you can truly make to the suspension. However, when we install the coilovers on the GTI, one of the beautiful things about that is we can really dial in the car suspension to make it do almost exactly what we want. The process of corner balancing is really rather simple. It's just transferring the weight carried by each corner of the car. In order to make sure the proper setup was achieved on the Wookiee, I took it to a place called Automotive Performance and Chassis in Cary, North Carolina, which is pretty local to me. These dudes were super cool letting me film, uh, actually coming in on a Saturday to let me film doing this work on the GTI, which was super cool. They do a lot of track cars, a lot of setups for VIR and high performance alignments. So this is gonna be a lot different than just your standard toe and go alignment. Now I had this whole thing prepared to explain to you guys exactly all about corner balancing, but actually Jim does a way better job of it using a table. So I'm gonna let him explain it a lot better than I was going to. Everyone's gone to a restaurant with a wobbly, wobbly table. As you can see, if you got one leg short than the other, it wobbles. On your car though, you've got a spring suspension, so you won't see a tire up in the air. But what you will find when you put the scales on it, you'll not have the weight evenly supported by all four corners. That's what the scales help tell you. Why is it important? When you brake, the front end dives, so the car would kind of move to one side. When you accelerate, again, the weight transfers to the back. When you turn to the left, it would dive one way. When you turn to the right, it would dive another. So on a track car, autocross, or even a good street car, you'd like to have the weight carry. But we have an engine in the front, so it, you won't see 50-50 weight front to rear. So what we do is we measure the weight carried by this corner and the opposite rear corner and compare it to the sum of the weight in the right front and the left rear. And what we'd like to see is a 50-50 on those diagonals so that this weight is 50% of the total of the car and this is 50% of the total of the car. That's the ideal. That's what a race car would try and do. If we get close, like 49% or 51 for a street car, that's really nice. For a track car where someone's being paid money to win, we'll get to 50-50. So now that you understand why it's so important to make sure this balance of our car is right, let's talk a little bit about how the process is done. First, what we need to do is we need to load up the driver's seat to simulate a driver being in it. This stack of weights simulates roughly my weight depending on how much I ate that day. We also need the rest of the vehicle to be how it's going to be, whether it's at the autocross event, at the track, or how it is most of the time you're driving. So if you have a big sub and amp in the back, leave it in, take it out, whatever you plan on doing at the track, make sure that that is set the exact way it's gonna be. Now with fuel, the reason you want half a tank is because that's about the average. When the tank is full, there's more weight in the rear. And then as that fuel is consumed, it lightens up the back end of the car. And I mentioned it at the beginning, we need to make sure the vehicle is properly aligned. You can see just how upset my suspension was after installing the coilovers. The suspension was pretty much dialed in exactly where it needed to be, at least with the toe, before doing these coilovers. Now we are working on a perfectly level surface. This is very important. We're going to lift the vehicle up and set it down on these boxes that they built. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow our suspension to settle you'll notice that they're rolling it on the scale and off the scale and on the scale and off the scale and on the scale and off the scale. And this is going to allow the suspension to fully settle to make sure nothing's bound. Whenever you lift a vehicle, you do need to make sure that you jounce and roll the suspension back and forth before making any adjustments. Here we can see the weight that's held by each corner of the car, and it shows us the percentage of balance. If you watch my video on adjusting coilovers, you'll see how I measured it from a fixed point to the bottom of the adjustment spindle. That's what I used, that's how I adjusted, and I got it really close to being that magic 50-50 balance. Now, we didn't make any adjustments to my car. I got this corner balance really, really close, really great for a street car. In Jim's words, if I were being paid to win races, we would get it to 50-50. Otherwise, 
it's a lot of time, it's a lot of money to get it perfect for simply a streetcar. So when I start getting paid to win races, we'll take it back and get it that 50-50. But what would it take for my car to achieve that perfect 50-50 balance? And if we were to do anything at this point, right. we, would, we would lower this so that it made this leg longer on our wobbly table. That would make this carry more weight, which would raise the left rear number maybe get up to 530 and that would get us much closer to 50 percent think back to when jim spun the leg down on the table and that balanced it out the same would apply for my car on the left rear corner now there's a lot of things that can affect the balance of your car think about if you've ever loaded the trunk of your vehicle up at the hardware store full of rocks or mulch or whatever and how different the car handled one you could see the suspension lower in the rear two acceleration changed three, braking change, or even when you have a car load of people, which is actually even more balanced, all these things can impact the balance of the car and the way the car performs. This is why it's so important, guys, if you're going to be installing coilovers, you need to make sure you get these adjustments done, get your alignment done, and I really do recommend a corner balance. You can get it really close by simply measuring with a tape measure like I did, but it's nice to double check and make sure that you're dialed in. And if you're gonna be putting it on a track, you really wanna make sure that it's right. Now there's probably a lot of situations where balancing doesn't need to be 50-50. Again, normal street car, not a huge deal. But if my number were say 48.2 instead of 49.16, we would have made the adjustment. Now I had a question about other changes to the vehicle that can impact balance. Because we're gonna be doing the brake upgrade, because we're going to be upgrading the brakes in the rear, I asked them about when's the next time we need to get this done. And they put it really great. You know, if you change wheel and tire package, yes, it changes the weight of the vehicle, but you're making a global change to all four corners. If you're doing brakes in the front, say, yes, it's going to change possibly the weight in the front or for, you know, the GTI, it's gonna change the weight in the rear too, but you're making a change to left and right. So it's not going to have a left front corner that's going to be thrown out of balance just because you're making these changes. But those are things we're going to be looking at in a future video. All right guys, so I'm gonna wrap it up there. Questions, comments about corner balancing, throw them down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Super shout out to the guys at Automotive Performance and Chassis over in Cary. Thank you guys so much for hooking me up, helping me out, letting me do this video. It was a pleasure hanging out with you guys. Really cool shop. Actually, uh, one of my old coworkers now works there. So uh, cheers, Brett. I hope you're uh, enjoying your new gig over there. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course on Snapchat. I'll also link up those guys down in the description. Check out their Facebook page. Check out their website as well. You can check out all the other videos for the GTI as well as subscribe and check out humblemechanic.com. They're in the boxes somewhere around here. I'm not sure where they'll appear. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.